This video is part of a series. It's heavy in scientific terminology and may expect familiarity with previous videos. If you're confused, please watch the rest of the playlist up until this point, or check out my genetics terminology document, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks! Man, it's been a while, huh? I'm glad y'all like the dog genetic series. Looking forward to the next one. Lots of folks have left comments on my cat genetic series asking about mutations that were either brand new, hard to find info on, or that I simply didn't know much about. So this is a follow-up wherein I hope to cover some of those rare, new, and or elusive genes to the best of my ability. Let's begin. Salmiac, also known as salty licorice as that's its closest translation, is a gorgeous mutation that first appeared in a Finnish feral population in 2007. For ages it was simply called the Finnish mutation until finally, recently, it's getting a proper name. Salmiac expresses as a white tux-like pattern as well as white modeling throughout the coat. The amount of tux-like whiteness as well as the amount of modeling can vary between individuals. I assume this variation is the same mix of polygenes and development that we see in standard white spotting. The cause is a huge deletion mutation downstream of KIT, the gene region where the W locus is located. As such, Salmiac is being treated as an allele of the W locus. All Salmiac cats gene tested by the study I found were homozygous, suggesting that Salmiac is recessive, at least to W, the no-white allele. I'm unaware of its interactions with S, Berman gloving, or white dominant, although I'd be shocked if it wasn't recessive to white dominant. Just like other forms of leucism, Salmiac can affect any color of cat. The reason you tend to see black cats when you look it up is because that's standard for the breed being created around the mutation. Salmiac doesn't seem to affect hearing, but research is ongoing. As of yet, I haven't been able to find any Salmiac cats displaying blue eyes, but given how few Salmiac cats there are and how rare blue eyes are on low white cats like tuxedos, I'd guess at it not being impossible? But we haven't seen any yet, so take that with a hunk of salt. A similar and arguably equally beautiful mutation is Carpati. Carpati cats have heavy roaning to the point where they may look almost totally white, except for the points, that is the face, feet, and tail. Unlike your classic Himalayan style color points though, Carpati has a lot of unpredictable variability. Even though their points tend to be more pigmented, they'll still have some roaning, most notably around their nose. Sometimes their legs slash feet and tails are all but entirely white. Some Carpati cats even have a quote unquote reverse color point look instead, with their white being mostly on the face, paws, and tail. We aren't sure what causes the variation, although it's been proposed that Carpati, believed to be dominant, might actually be incompletely dominant, and humble was I guess Carpati cats may be more prone to the reverse color point look, but that's speculation at the moment from what I could tell. My source here suggests that it's likely temperature sensitive, like the Himalayan color points, but it doesn't go into detail. They're often born pale and then darken with age. Their eye colors don't seem to be affected though. It's not on the color point locus though. It has its own for now. Being dominant, or at least incompletely dominant, we can represent it with capital K, and the recessive non rowan allele with little k. You know what is on the color point locus, though? Quick recap, the Himalayan color points are the temperature-sensitive ones located on the albino locus, nicknamed C. CS makes a Siamese pattern, CB makes a sepia pattern, and they're incompletely dominant with each other and combined to make a mink pattern. Well, a third color point has been discovered. It's called mocha, represented as the CM allele, and it's pretty interesting. In Thai, this color is called Wila Krong Si. Please forgive pronunciation. It seems to lighten the cat about the same amount that mink does. However, unlike mink and other color points which keep the points fully or near fully dark, mocha seems to have a significant lightening effect on the points themselves as well. The actual intensity of the lightening, both of the main body and the points, has significant variability, owing both to individual expression and, of course, temperature sensitivity. Like Siamese and sepia, mocha is incompletely dominant with both of them. Both heterozygote conditions, termed siamocha and burmocha respectively, are more or less what you'd expect. The siamocha pattern is lighter than standard mocha, and burmocha is darker. Both of them still seem to express lighter points. It's unclear exactly how mocha affects eye color. Mocha cats themselves seem to be able to have blue or green eyes from what I can gather. One of my sources says they have aqua eyes, so take that as you will. Siamocha cats seem to pretty consistently have blue eyes. Burmocha seem to have the most variety, ranging from near yellow to intensely blue. Interestingly, mocha cats have pink leathers. Probably. One source claims that pink noses and paw pads are, quote, strictly a kitten thing, and that mocha cats grow out of their pink leathers as they age. 
although they never get fully black. Another source shows a full-grown CMCM cat with pink leathers. It's possible that some mocha cats keep their pink and others don't, and while I haven't seen every heterozygote ever, none of the pictures I've been able to find of Siamocha or Bromocha have pink leathers, or at least not the striking pale mocha pink. So, whatever's going on, I don't think it affects heterozygotes. This next one is probably the most requested gene I've yet to cover. Caramel is a modifier of dilute. It turns cream into apricot, blue into caramel, lilac into taupe, and fawn into... uh, fawn caramel. These are all essentially slightly warmer, honeyer versions of the original colors being modified. Tabbies with a caramel modifier may have a slight metallic sheen, especially at the neck, top of the head, tail, and feet. It's uncertain if caramel is actually a single locus, or if it's several polygenes working together, especially with how much variation exists in caramel-modified cats. Caramel can range anywhere from a slight muddiness to a full-on brown-ass cat. Additionally, caramel cats' warmness often starts barely visible and then increases with age. But since it's often treated as a monogenetic dominant allele, here's that allele. Capital DM and little dm for the recessive non-caramel allele. Remember, even though it's dominant, it's a modifier, and the thing that it modifies is recessive. A cat with capital DM in their genome won't express it if they're not also dilute. A lot of folks have asked me about the rosette pattern found in Bengal breed cats. That's not a simple can of worms to open, as Bengal is a hybrid breed, which makes it not only weirdly unique, but difficult to find info on. All Bengals descend from at least one Asian leopard cat ancestor, a species separated from cats by about 6 million years and 3% of their genome. For reference, humans and chimps have about a 14% difference in genome. Adhering to Haldane's rule, hybrid male offspring are infertile, but females are capable of reproducing, albeit at a reduced rate. It takes about three more generations of breeding female hybrids to non-hybrid, or lower F-number hybrid toms, before male offspring become fertile. This here is where I had some bold text in my script that said, quote, God damn it, I can't find shit on Bengal rosettes, Murphy come back to this. So I think that itself says a lot. I can't find definitive answers on this, but I have found some weird details that should help someone somewhere a little bit. First of all, rosettes are not themselves a spot, but spots together. Meaning, when you look at an individual rosette, you aren't looking at a big weird spot, you're looking at a bunch of tiny spots all clumped into a unit. Second of all, rosettes are a trait pretty much only found in bangles, so it stands to reason that bangles probably got them from Asian leopard cats, meaning you'd need to have some Asian leopard cat ancestry in order to have rosettes. And, of course, being a modified version of spotted, also genetically a mackerel. Asian leopard cat rosettes tend to be a lot smaller and less distinct than some of the ones on low F number bangles, though, which may very well be cat genes modifying or interacting with whatever's doing the rosettes in a weird way. That's what happens with charcoal, which I'll talk about later. But apparently the quote, best rosetted patterns came from a line of bangles with a fucking Margay ancestor. And looking at one, I can see how that might have happened. Either way, it tends to be more prominent in lower F generations and disappears with higher F generations, meaning the closer in generations the hybrid is to their wild ancestor, the more likely they are to have distinct rosettes, which is another point in favor of it coming from and thus necessitating Asian leopard cat ancestry. Two other genes I've been asked about are breed exclusive to the Bengal, so I'll cover them here as well. First up, glitter. Glitter causes a softer coat and adds a slight shine. It's recessive caused by reduced expression of FGFR2, which affects hair thickness. The glitter part, the shine, comes from the hairs of the undercoat getting really thin at the top and reflecting light weird. I'm seeing GL used for glitter, but I'm not sure what the dominant non-glitter is. Capital GL? N? Eh, pick something. Interestingly, despite being found exclusively in the Bengal breed, the glitter mutation comes from their domestic ancestors rather than their Asian leopard cat ancestors. Cool. Charcoal is a little more complicated. First of all, unlike glitter, this one does come from Asian leopard cats. Domestic cats have two alleles on the agoti locus, capital A for yes agoti and little a for non agoti. The Asian leopard cat version of yes agoti is called ABP and it works a little differently. Owing to the complicated way that genes interact with each other, the APB allele as expressed by domestic cats takes on a very unique appearance. Charcoal cats have reduced saturation and are often darker and tend to have a mask of striping around their face. Charcoal does seem to be affected by the usual suite of agoti modifiers, but there aren't exactly a lot of classic or ticked bangles, so take that with a grain of salt. 
Just like with little a, the ginger allele, capital O, continues to just hate and violently ignore non-capital A alleles. Charcoal doesn't affect ginger cats. This makes charcoal tortoiseshells look particularly badass. Charcoal as an allele displays fascinating incomplete dominance. APB is fully recessive to capital A. Heterozygous with little a, however, APB interacts to create midnight charcoal. This is the darkest and least saturated charcoal. Homozygous APB APB cats instead express twilight charcoal, which retains some saturation, however reduced. I owe a huge thank you to an amazing fan who took the time to put together and then link me to a massive document with lots of sources for charcoal info. However, I am an idiot, and I forgot to write down your name. Please leave a comment, I want to pin it and give you credit for helping me with this. There's also two more A locus alleles thanks to hybridization. ALS, found in savannas as inherited from serval ancestors, and AJC, found in chassis as inherited from jungle cat ancestors. I don't know about either of these, though, sadly. Lastly, you may remember my mental breakdown trying to figure out what the actual hell was going on with all those gold inhibitor interactions. Golden chill, golden tabby, golden shaded tabby, chinchilla. I don't have definitive answers for every single term that's used, but I can at least tease out where some of my confusion came from. Namely, that there's two different causes of golden tabbies. The one I covered in my video was caused by wide banding, a polygenetic trait that widens the bands of a goatee hairs, making a tabby appear golden between the stripes. This this type of gold, it turns out, often messes with the stripes too, making them messy or staticky. They're still visibly tabbies, but in particularly extreme cases, there can be some real blurring. On tick tabbies specifically, wide band each stripes for breakfast. I believe this is where golden shell and golden shaded come from. These terms refer to wide band based golden tabbies. Golden shaded is the term for a ticked golden tabby whose gold comes from wide banding. Golden shell seems to refer to tick golden tabbies whose extreme wide banding has all but destroyed any traces of black save for the leathers and tail tip. This is also referred to as golden chinchilla, specifically to annoy and confuse me personally. In combination with inhibitor, the silver slash smoke gene you'll recall, this extreme wide banding creates chinchilla. It takes all that fail melanin that's in those super wide bands and deletes it, leaving a pale whitishness instead. This is the form of gold most commonly seen on Persians, a breed for which the chinchilla phenotype is common. In contrast, the form of gold most often seen on Siberian golden tabbies is called extreme sunshine or Siberian sunshine. And this one is, we think, a single locus. Extreme sunshine is one of several mutations on the Corin locus, all of which do golden y things to cats. There's extreme sunshine, represented by SG, then just sunshine, which I think uses SH, and finally a gene found in British short hairs called copper or flaxen gold that uses FG or cop. I'm going to use FG because ACAB. And the no funny business normal allele is, of course, N. And apparently there's a brand new one in Bengals that we know nothing about. Look, cool. Sunshine is more or less what it sounds like. It's a less extreme, extreme sunshine. Flax and gold, on the other hand, pushes the color of the hair to the very tip, creating a very light, goldeny, ticked-like cat with a distinct Urajiro pattern. In contrast with wideband gold, extreme sunshine cats have pink noses but dark paw pads. Also in contrast with wideband gold, which combines with inhibitor to create chinchilla, sunshine and extreme sunshine combine with inhibitor to create bimetallic. Bimetallic cats look more or less like silver tabbies, but with this very interesting, distinct reddishness in areas where we would normally see extreme rufism. The flanks and belly, sides of the neck and muzzle, feet, tail, and whatnot. Gorgeous stuff. From what I'm getting both from the description and single provided image, Flax and Gold's interaction with inhibitor causes even the stripes to significantly lighten. All of the Corin mutations, that is extreme sunshine, sunshine, and Flax and Gold, seem to be incompletely dominant with one another. Extreme sunshine, X sunshine heterozygotes are easy, they're sunshines who are partway between extreme and not extreme. The sunshines and flax and gold are hypothetically and completely dominant with one another, and are both found in British short slash long hairs, but I have no pictures or descriptions. Sorry. It seems that all three known cord mutations are also incompletely dominant with N, the no funny business allele. For sunshine, this appears similar to the rufusing that just makes a tabby browner. It adds a warmness to the coat, but isn't golden per se? If you part the pelt though, you'll see that the base of the hairs is pale instead of dark, like normal brown tabbies. I believe extreme sunshine is similar, but don't quote me on that. 
Flax in gold is pretty dramatic, though. NFG heterozygotes frequently, but don't always, appear like normal flax in gold, but with darker paws. Sometimes, FGFG cats express like chinchillas, and seem to constantly change whether they look like normal chinchillas or if they're goldeny. They may change depending on the season, hormones, age, all that jazz. Reasonably, we aren't sure if flax in gold is actually just FG, or if we're accidentally lumping together a lot of similarly expressing genes found in the same breed, and it explain a lot of the more extreme variety, and it's happened before. In fact, it happens basically any time a Corin mutation occurs. At some point, all of these and Wideband were all mixed up and mistaken for each other, and will continue to be until the end of time. We will never fully understand Corin, but by God, I will die trying! That's all for this one. By all means, keep suggesting cat genes if you find any. I want to do more corn related follow-ups in 20 fucking years or however long it takes to discover the inevitable 50 more corn mutations. Maybe one day copper will make sense. Or maybe talk more about hybrid stuff. I couldn't find much on non-Bengal hybrid A locus alleles, so maybe there'll be more info on that one day. Until then, bye-bye.